Hi there, my name is Kelsey, and today I am going to be talking about three easy steps to help get you started on a plant-based diet. So at this point, you have probably heard some of the many benefits of following a plant-based diet, but you might not know where to begin. So hopefully today I can share with you some easy tips to help get you started. All right, so today we will start by talking about this idea called the diet continuum. Then we'll talk about the three steps, which are adding in more of your favorites, including all plant-based food groups and making food swaps. And then we'll end with the bottom line or um, a key point for you to remember. All right, so when we think about a plant-based diet, we shouldn't think about it in the usual sense of the word diet. Oftentimes diet can be associated with calorie restricting or cutting out a bunch of foods, leaving you feeling hungry, not a lot of energy. So instead, I think it's helpful to think about a plant-based diet as overall steps uh, that you make in lifestyle changes. So if we think about diet as a continuum rather than a black or white approach, uh, it can be helpful to view it in this light. So a plant-based diet can include, it can look different for everyone, and it can include vegan diets, vegetarian diets, Mediterranean diets, but the idea here is including more plant foods in your diet. Uh, and the more plant foods that you include, the farther to this right side of the continuum you will be. All right, so the three easy steps. First is to add more of your favorites. Second is to include all plant-based food groups. And third is to make food swaps. All right, let's talk about each of these a little bit more. So first, adding more of your favorites. The idea here is to take plant foods that you already enjoy and add them to more of your favorite meals. So instead of filling your plate with the main dish, you can fill half the plate with whatever that favorite vegetable is and then use the main dish as more of a side dish. So for example, if you're going to eat spaghetti and meatballs, but you really enjoy roasted broccoli, you could fill half of your plate with the roasted broccoli and then a quarter of your plate with the spaghetti and meatballs. This still allows you to enjoy your favorite food, but it allows you to also incorporate more plants into the meal. All right, the second step is to include all plant-based food groups. This is really important. So the picture here shows the healthy eating plate, which is a plate that was designed by Harvard. And it's a good visual that shows all of the essential macronutrients that we need to include in a meal to make it balanced. So we need carbohydrates, we need proteins, and we need fats to make a balanced meal. All right, so let's talk about each one of these a little bit more. First is carbohydrates. There are two classes of carbohydrates. The first is carbohydrates that are broken down into glucose or sugar that our body uses for fuel, for energy. And the second is carbohydrates that don't necessarily have a lot of that natural sugar, but they have fiber. And I have a whole separate video on fiber, so check that out for more on that topic. But today we're gonna to focus on those carbohydrates that break down into glucose. So these are things like fruit, starchy vegetables, like root vegetables, and whole grains. And it is really important to include this category in a plant-based diet. Uh, including starchy vegetables and whole grains can really help to give it that hearty, warm meal, um, rather than just eating green leafy vegetables, which may not feel as satisfying, but it's in including these starchy carbohydrates that you can get that feeling of heartiness. So some examples to add more carbohydrates into your diet would be including a fruit with your breakfast or roasting root vegetables to add as a side or including whole grains like quinoa in your salads. All right, the next macronutrient is protein, and protein is really important to include in a plant-based diet to support the growth and repair of tissues in the body. Now, oftentimes people will question, can you get enough protein from plants? And the answer is absolutely yes, you can. So some great sources of protein-packed plants include beans and lentils, so black beans, kidney beans, pinto beans, lentils, as well as soy products and tofu, like tempeh or soy milk, soybeans, edamame, and then certain vegetables like Brussels sprouts or broccoli are really high in protein. 
And some ways that you can add more plant protein to your diet would be like adding beans to soups, um, adding baked tofu to roasted vegetables, um, and those are some ways to incorporate more protein. All right, the last macronutrient is fats. And fats are really important to include on a plant-based diet because they help you to feel full and satiated. Uh, that If we look back at that Harvard healthy eating plate, it does highlight healthy oils. And while it's true, healthy plant oils can provide um, some healthy sources of fats, it is better to choose fats from the whole food source. So these are gonna be foods like avocados, nuts and seeds, and olives. And the reason for this is that when you choose the whole food source versus an oil, an oil is really concentrated, so it's gonna have a lot of calories in such a little amount. But when you eat the whole food, yes, it's going to have that healthy fat, but it's also gonna have fiber, vitamins, minerals, protein, and carbohydrates. So it's a better deal. All right, so the last step is to make food swaps. So if you found yourself adding in more vegetables, um, but you're ready to take it a step further, uh, this would be to substitute animal products with plant products. So some fun examples would be to do scrambled tofu instead of scrambled eggs for breakfast. If we go back to our spaghetti and meatballs example, you could try a lentil-based meatball instead of a regular meatball. And you could substitute banana nice cream for regular ice cream. And this allows you to still enjoy some of your favorite foods, but more with a plant bias. And I wanna leave you with this. The bottom line is just include more plants. This will point you in the right direction if we think back to that continuum. It'll point you in the right direction to help you transition to a whole foods plant-based diet. Remember, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing approach. Every small step that you take to including more plants in your diet will make a huge difference. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching.